sound, like the Kansas City sound, you know, the Chicago sound. It's got an international reputation, the music from Dunedin. A huge cult following overseas on the back of bands like, um, like uh, The Clean and The Chills. It's 15 years now since an eccentric record company called Flying Nun released that first single that began the so-called sound and the anniversary was celebrated at the weekend and it wasn't only the Holmes program who turned up, so did music media from Germany and from the United States, from Britain and Australia. So how is it we haven't heard more of these bands and if they're so great, why aren't they millionaires, eh? Jim Mora went south and got the answers and to join the celebrations. Come back to your land, show your face, make a stand. Saturday night in Dunedin, the chills are on stage and their song, Come Home, rocks the Student Union Hall. It's a rallying cry for a southern city that has given music something special. Outside, as the music bounces off the North Dunedin architecture, it seems to find kindred spirits in the darkness. The so-called Dunedin Sound, very gothic city, mournful at times, but high energy too. Good music. Yeah, and they're here. They're live. They're wild. To be considered a museum exhibit at the age of 46 is unnerving to say the least. Ex-heartthrob Craig Scott launches the celebrations at the Settlers well, Museum. They're all here, all the bands most New Zealanders have never heard of, even though the New York Times said there was greatness here, even though the prestigious Village Voice magazine called the city the Liverpool of the 90s. Dunedin musicians or, and, and original songwriters are actually generating, I, I believe, hundreds of millions of dollars outside of Dunedin and outside of New Zealand. Virtually none of that is coming back into this town, either to the musicians or indeed to anyone else. You've probably sold, I'm guessing, 150,000 albums all up? That'd be something like that, yeah. And yet, you've seen none of that money, really, have you? Oh, we've seen bits and pieces, but the costs are always going to be more. It's, it's so expensive taking a band on the road. The problem is that Eden is, is isolated. It's difficult getting the promotion and the distribution and the hype and all the rest of it perhaps needed to break a band big internationally. But I, I, there's no question at all in my mind the best Dunedin bands are world class. Some say that the Dunedin sound began here 20 years ago at Maud's Fabric Barn. Well, in those days it was the Beneficiaries Hall. And one night, a band called The Enemy popped up on stage. And suddenly there was punk and it gave us a, a blueprint. You know, we can do this. Chris Knox did it with four track recorders in little rooms in Dunedin's North End. They all did it that way. Singles released for $50, creating musical history on the doll. But they didn't all slash themselves on stage like the early enemy. It wasn't planned. But once I accidentally sort of cut myself at the cook one night when we were really depressed and it didn't hurt, I thought, ooh, it became expected. Every night I went on, I had to, you know, cut another part of my anatomy. But the first flying nun single 15 years ago was by The Clean. It was called Tally Ho. It was more of a, a, a way of doing things that all the bands had in common in terms of doing things themselves, doing their own artwork for the records, doing their own posters, um, doing the sound themselves. So what was it? Not the university, really. Most of them didn't go. Maybe the isolation helped. And maybe it was the Dunedin weather, which can occasionally get chilly, which focused their minds, kept them inside, fiddling with their amps and keyboards. Whatever the ingredients, the resulting brew was pretty strong stuff. Roy Colbert has run his record shop here for 25 years. Nobody in, in Sweden like Dabba, till the rest of the world like them. And is there a chance that one of them could become a Nirvana or an R.E.M.? Oh, definitely, yeah. No question. I think it's still possible, but... Uh, mm. Millions, I mean, yeah. It's, you know, you it's a really fickle industry. There are many musicians all over the world that are uh, wonderful who are still scrimping and saving you know, into their old age, you know. Living here may hinder their fortune, but it's helped their fame. The Neaton's somehow been a part of some of New Zealand's grandest, most startling pop music. There's much more of an audience for New Zealand music 
in the States particularly than there is here. And uh, parts of Europe, they're absolutely fanatical about it. And, you know, they, they could probably recite, or, you know, any, any of my lyrics if I, if I went in there. In fact, they, they all sing along in their odd accents. It's, it's quite amazing. At the birthday party, the hard times and the dog shoot are forgotten. There are nights when it's all worthwhile. And tonight, a thousand Dunedin fans have come to hear their sound, to see their legends. And Jim says how uh, the band everybody in Dunedin's picking is the one to...